Ready to begin, Mike? Yes. All right, good morning, everyone. This is Richard Byrne. For those of you who I haven't had the pleasure to meet before, I'm one of the mediators here at NAM, and I, I welcome you to our uh, seminar this morning where we are going to introduce everyone to the transition to virtual ADR. Uh, I'm gonna be joined in this endeavor this morning uh, by Mike Morio. Mike is a member of NAM's IT department, uh, and I'm very happy to uh, have him participate with me this morning because those of you who do know me know I am very technologically deficient. But that's part of the reason I'm doing this this morning is to ultimately show all of you how easy this process is. Um, so here's how we're going to proceed this morning. Uh, I'm going to be providing the, the, the overview from the mediator standpoint, from the party standpoint. Uh, Mike is going to be waiting in the wings. Uh, he is going to be collecting your questions uh, as we proceed. I think you're able to see on your screens where you're able to ask questions. Uh, he is going to collect those during the course of our uh, discussions this morning. And then, as I mentioned, he's going to curate those at the end. Uh, he'll toss out a few to me. He'll answer the more uh, technical questions you'll be sending in. And of course, the, the ultimate goal is to give everybody at least a preliminary sense of what this process is like and to put everyone at ease as we move into this brave new world of, of virtual ABR. But to begin, uh, of course, let me uh, just express my, my hope that everybody is, is doing as well as they can under the circumstances. Obviously, this is a very strange, unusual, bizarre time for all of us as we are trying to process this with families, with colleagues, with the world around us. So I'm hoping everyone is doing as, as well as can be expected under the circumstances. Uh, I myself, I am in uh, week two of quarantine. Uh, I began to show some symptoms a little bit over a week ago a little bit of a fever, a little bit of a cough, and of course the doctor said go into hiding uh, for the next 14 days. So I am talking to you from an undisclosed location, but feeling much better, uh, fortunately, and of course quite relieved uh, as at least what I experienced was, was very, very mild. Um, so again, my best wishes to everyone and their families. So let's start. Uh, the technology we're going to talk about today, I, I, I want to emphasize to everybody, is not something that was put together in a slapdash manner by NAM in, in the face of this crisis. Frankly, it's something, it, it's an infrastructure that NAM has been putting together now for a couple of years. And in fact, I took my initial training oh, probably two and a half, three years ago on it. So it's, it's something uh, NAM certainly saw as beginning to be the forefront of the future for ADR. Um, as I mentioned, I took my training, initial training back then. Uh, its acceptance has been growing, um, but Listen, like anything new and different, there was, listen, we're all human. We're all not looking to change for the sake of change. So I saw some resistance, some hesitation, although I will tell you, I had a, a fantastic experience probably, oh, a little over two years ago where I was mediating a very complex insurance coverage case involving Lloyd's of London and I literally had the three underwriters at Lloyd's over in uh, over in London on the screen and they were an active uh, and robust participant all three of them through the course of a nine-hour mediation and one of the things you'll come to see once you try this it's really remarkable you you actually forget we're not with each other in the same room. Uh, it, it becomes that seamless. But again, I do understand, I do appreciate there is some hesitation to this, human nature being what it is. And listen, there, there are legitimate questions uh, on a substantive level that, that are asked as well. You know, is it secure? Um, 
how will the technology give the same feel as a as a face-to-face -face mediation will, will there be glitches in in the technology are we gonna get frustrated with the process um, so what i'm going to tell you is and i'm going to encourage you contact your your, your colleagues contact your, your friends anyone who has tried this technology i promise you is going to tell you it was amazing it simply is that strong a process. Now, listen, none of us anticipated coronavirus, right? We were not looking to literally overnight flip the entire book of pending mediations and arbitrations to uh, a virtual process, but here we are. Nonetheless, listen, mother's the necessity of invention, right? Or necessity is the mother of invention, I think is, is the more appropriate way to say it. So, so here, here we are, certain circumstances have been forced upon us and it has really caused us to hit the fast forward button on, on the technology and occasion the, the, the need for us to adapt as quickly as as we can. And to Nam's credit, I, I do really have to give them an awful lot of credit here. That they have really stepped up and made this happen. Uh, I, I joked the other day uh, with with one of my uh, co-mediators at Nam, and I said, "Well, listen, we used to call it ADR because we had the court system, and this was the alternative dispute resolution." Well. Right now, this is PBR. This is the primary means of dispute resolution. So this, again, is a matter of us having to deal with very exigent circumstances. But fortunately, we have the technology to be able to continue to work, to be able to continue to hear our matters, to be able to continue to resolve uh, the cases. So let me give you a little bit um, of a sense of what the experience is like. So, if I could boil it down to one word, the one word about this process is it's easy. It's really, really easy. I, I don't want technophobes like me out there in the audience being anxious about this, being concerned about it. it all you have to do as a party is log on. That's all you have to do. The rest is really up to Nam and to me. So the IT department is, is terrific. And again, you'll hear from Mike Morio in a little bit directly, but, but they are shadowing each and every one of the mediation. So very often you'll log on and you'll see there's somebody in the IT department in the virtual conference room with us and they'll say, hey, everybody log on, anybody having any issues? How's your audio? How's your video? Uh, and once they've got everybody up and running, they'll say, "Okay, Rich, I'm gonna I'm gonna back out. You got it. Call me. Uh, email me if you have any technical issues." And and we're up and running. Um, and at that point, I get to run the show. I kind of control uh, keeping everybody together. Well, listen, it's just like any other mediation. We do. We we start with our opening statements. We're in our virtual conference room together. We can see each other, all right? We can obviously hear each other. Um, and then once we go through openings, I'm able to create and assign the parties to uh, virtual breakout rooms. And it's really remarkable. So you don't see what I see, but I get a little list of who the attendees are, I, I check off, I assign them to different breakout rooms, then I open the breakout rooms, and everybody disperses to their uh, respective corners, no, no differently than is, is if we were doing this in the office and I were walking up and down the hall and assigning everybody to their, to their separate breakout rooms. So I will tell you, I, I, had, a, a, <clears throat> I had a case last week uh, it was a it was an underpinning matter construction case. Uh, those of you who deal in that world know they can be very involved, very complicated. I had five breakout rooms, so I'm literally not literally I'm virtually 
walking from breakout room to breakout room to breakout room to breakout room, just like I was doing it in the Channon building if we were all together in Manhattan. And I'm checking in with everybody and I'm taking their positions and then taking offers and demands and then circling back to the other parties. And the beauty of this is I can then kind of mix and match uh, parties just like I would if we were together. So I'll say, well, you know what? I, you know, I want the general contractor to talk to the subcontractor a little bit. So I put them together in a room. We talk. I break them apart again. So it, it I have to tell you, it, the, the proof is in the pudding. It's, it's hard. Um, and I know there's hesitation. But, it, but it's hard to envision until you do it. But once you do it, and, and I asked Mike Morio th this morning when we were chatting on another matter, I said, have you heard any complaints about this? And he said, not one. And I will tell you, I have had the same experience. Uh, my cases are moving. My cases are settling. I think everybody views it as a very positive process. Um, it's, it's really that remarkable of, of an experience. Um, one thing we do, you know, obviously, since I can't have you literally sign the NAM uh, post-mediation agreement, once we settle, we do that in a little bit of a virtual way. So those of you who have worked with me before, you know, I have a little bit of a spiel I give at the end that I kind of read out the terms of the NAM post-mediation agreement. I do all of that. I mean, fill it out, I hold it up to the screen, I, I read through uh, the terms, and then I ask all the participants, do I have your telephonic authority to sign your name to this form? And everybody says yes. And then what I do is I convert it at the end of the day into a PDF and I send it into NAM, and then they distribute it electronically to the parties the following day. So everybody gets a hard copy of the post-mediation agreement. And again, the only change there is you're not literally signing it yourself. I'm signing it on your behalf um, with, with your authority. So I, I see this, honestly, as, as a game changer. Um, I don't think we're going to go back when, when this terrible crisis passes and, and, and God willing a lot sooner rather than later. I don't think we're necessarily going to go back to same old, same old. I think we'll certainly do a significant number of traditional mediations. Um, but there, there's a real savings in time and cost. Um, certainly for out-of-town clients, out-of-town insurers, you know, for the ability to log in, have 90% of the feel of, of a live mediation without having to incur travel time uh, and, and expense. Listen, ease of scheduling is going to be a big takeaway from all of this. You know, you know, listen, we're all busy. We all have uh, conflicting schedules. I always say, God bless my scheduler. Those, who, those of you who know Lisa Amorosa, I could never do her job dealing with my schedule, with your schedule, with the carrier schedule, with your client schedule. She, somehow she makes it work. But the ease with which we're going to be able to get these things on calendar now because we're not going to have to worry as much about where people are. Listen, as something as simple as a blizzard, right? All right, a year ago, two years ago, if we had a blizzard, that would wipe out the calendar for everybody. We'd lose a day. There's no reason for that anymore. Um, we'll be able to convert these to virtual ADRs. We'll be able to continue on with our work. And again, it is unfortunate that we're coming to gain this experience with this speed because of the circumstances in the world today. But it is a positive. Um, I, I, I'm going to encourage everybody who's, who's on the webinar this morning, if you haven't tried it, please do. Um, I do honestly think you're going to be very impressed and very comfortable with it. The participants 
aren't asked to do anything other than sit in front of their laptop or, or their iPad and be prepared to work just like any other mediation. As I mentioned, the, the MIT department does all the heavy lifting. They've trained me to do the little bit that I do, and I'm, I'm getting okay at it. Um, I'm not intimidated by it. I'm getting more and more comfortable with it. Um, you know, as I said, this, this process is, is really working. Um, and again, if you're not ready to make the leap, talk to others in your office. Talk to others with whom you have professional relationships. Hey, have you tried this? I, I promise you nobody's going to say, oh, my God, it was awful. It didn't work. They're going to say, you know what? It works. And right now, when we all have to be trying to continue our, our business to the best of our ability on behalf of our, our, our clients, listen, this is the way it's going to work. So again, that's, that's kind of the overview from, from my perspective. I'm, I'm gonna open the floor to Mike Morio, let him curate some of the questions to see what people are asking. And of course, we'll, we'll be happy to answer any questions uh, we can. Thanks, Rich. Okay, so right now, I'm, I'm just gonna open up the floor to everybody right now. Start throwing in some of your questions online. We'll be happy to answer them. Um, I'll be handling any kind of technical questions and Rich will be able to handle anything from a uh, from a mediator or a client's uh, viewpoint as far as during the uh, case itself. So the first question we have is from Richard Levy, uh, Rich. It's uh, how will the arbitrations work? Which is a great question. It's a little bit different than the Meads. Right. And, and, and that will be a little bit different. Obviously, there is an ability, and Mike can talk to this, that there's a, a, a screen share component to this, which will allow you to introduce documents and exhibits. Uh, so the process has continued again. It is a little bit different. It's a little bit more involved than the mediations per se, because we are dealing with testimony. We are dealing with uh, exhibits, but Mike, I'll let you explain to the folks how that works as far as sharing exhibits and letting everyone see what's being introduced into evidence. Sure. So with an arb, it's 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 a little bit difficult, but it's also a little bit easier at the same time. So the only difficulty is is that uh, in order to to do presentations of material, you have an option to share your screen. Um, that's about the extent of it. And again, if anybody has anything to present. The IT staff is there to help support that in the beginning, walk you through the process before the case begins. The easy part is on the hearing officer side because with an arbitration, there are no breakout rooms. So everybody's in the room together. Nobody breaks apart. Nobody gets put on hold. So it's a, it's a trade-off. There's a little bit, of a little bit more of a manual process on the presenter's side, but on the hearing officer side, it becomes a little bit more easier and fluid. Let's jump on to the next question, Rich. So... Um, Timeline for scheduling a mediation. They're asking 48 hours a week. Um, scheduling really hasn't changed, everybody. Uh, it's the same. Uh, if, you're, if your case is presently on schedule right now, we're trying to convert. Um, and again, scheduling a mediation or an arbitration, whatever it may be, uh, again, that, that scheduling is just normal process for us. It's built into our systems. Uh, the systems can easily convert any case that's on the, on the docket right now. Um, to a uh, to a Zoom virtual meeting. Mm -hmm. Grab the next question here. Uh, next one. Okay, this is one that's very popular lately. So we've heard that rumors regarding Zoom opening up your entire computer to hackers. Actually, folks, the 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 answer to that is actually the reverse. The concern that's in, in, at hand right now is if your personal computer is compromised by a hacker, and you join a Zoom meeting, they have the potential of opening up a screen share and displaying offensive material. How do we work around that with, with the way that we handle it at NAM? is this. IT is managing every single job that's out there. So what I mean by that is every hearing that's out there, we're fielding it, but our hearing officers are also trained that if something's going on, put somebody on hold immediately. Mm -hmm. That takes them out of the room, that takes the offensive material off of the screen. From there, they get IT involved, we mitigate the situation and we move the case forward one way or the other. But at least what we can do is we control the process. 
a lot of times that question is being addressed because we're talking about kids that are joining a Zoom meeting in a classroom. Nobody has taken over the control of a host and it becomes very concerning. So that answers that question. <laughs> um, let's see. A lot of these are for me today, Rich. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, this one hey, we listen, I, I, I just want to give, give Mike one more well-deserved pat on the back because from my experience, you know, he talks about jumping into situations where there may be a, a technical issue arising. So I have had a couple of experiences over over the last two weeks where uh you know i saw a technical issue arising and i'll i'll quickly email mike uh from the site and i'll say mike can you jump into the virtual conference room and, and i'm telling you within 30 to 60 seconds all of a sudden there he is with the parties and he'll say hey folks what's the problem and he, he'll uh, he or one of his colleagues will be, be able to ferret out what the issue is. And then he'll say, okay, looks like everybody's back on track. Let me step out of your meeting. Good luck. Hope you settle your case. So they're, they're watching us. You don't know they're watching us, but, but the MIT is, is kind of floating above all these mediations and arbitrations, making sure they are going as seamlessly as possible. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next one is, is can we show you how breakout rooms work? Unfortunately, in a webinar, breakout rooms are not available. Um, but again, the option that you have is to, if you have a case that's coming up, um, we could absolutely make some sort of arrangements to have um, a quick demo for you if need be. Um, we tend to at least try to get you at least operational first, first, but reach out to the scheduling department, schedule your case, get on the docket, and uh, from there, we'll get you, you know, we'll, they'll get you uh, in touch with the IT department to set up some sort of a way to at least test and see what's going on. But unfortunately, in a webinar, we can't show breakout rooms. Right. And just to give it to you from my perspective, so, so, so what I see, you know, let's do a, a, a simple one on one case plaintiff versus defendant. Um, <clears throat> so as I toggle back and forth, you know, I've assigned plaintiff uh, to breakout room number one. I've assigned defendant and uh, insurance company adjuster or client to breakout room number two. And I literally just toggle back and forth between the two rooms. So when I step in, I'll say, hey, I'm here. And then all of a sudden, if I'm in breakout room number two, on my screen, I have a split screen with defense counsel, perhaps with his or her adjuster, they can see me. Listen, it's kind of looking at, uh, I'll show my age, like the old Brady Bunch show where you saw all those squares of, of people up on the screen. So that's, that's the way it operates. I'll tell you, I had an interesting experience uh, last week uh, where we had um, uh, an underlying personal injury case where the plaintiff uh, was a professional guitarist and that's how he had made his living through the years and quite an impressive resume frankly of people he had worked with as a studio musician uh, so one of the things he wanted to convey and that his attorney wanted to convey was how he was struggling using his left hand uh, holding the guitar so he and his wife were down in Florida. Uh, so I had them in a breakout room with his counsel. Uh, and then when it was time to just kind of let him play a few notes and a few chords to give a demonstration to the defense, I brought the defense into their breakout room. He played a little bit, he was quite good. Um, and then I back the defense out of the breakout room. But, you know, so here we are, you, you know, again, it, it's really remarkable that you forget you're not all together. So here's this fellow and his wife down in Florida, right? I've got the lawyers up in, in, in New York, and yet here we are watching this fellow give an example of how he's been impacted on his ability to play his guitar as, as a professional musician. So again, just a little bit of an example, but that's, that's the flavor. You really do get to see things in real time. You get to hear things in real time. There's, we, we, we don't, you don't step on each other's lines. There, there's no, uh, honestly, it's better than a conference call. It, it's, you know, the, we get so frustrated when sometimes we're doing this by conference call and say, oh, no, no, you go first. No, no, you go first. 
that doesn't happen with Zoom. It's really a very um, easy, seamless conversation. Okay. So the next two questions, Rich, I'm going to leave to you. They're about okay. confidentiality. So one is mediate. Here's the first one. Mediation okay. is a confidential process. What happens if someone videotapes the session with their phone? Second thing that's out there is how do we be sure what's said during a call is, is confidential? So can you okay, just let's... confidentiality and how you handle the potentiality of somebody doing a videotaping during one of your hearings? All right. So let's let's take the second one first. All right, because that's obviously something we're all concerned with, including me. Um, listen, you know how this operates and those of you who have worked with me know how I operate. Listen, trust, confidence, candor, confidentiality, that's, that's the linchpin of, of, of what we do. So we have to have faith in this technology, all right? Once you experience it, you, you do come to have that comfort level. Uh, you'll see that when I'm in a breakout room with you, it's just us. Um, I know from experience when I step into another breakout room, they didn't know I was coming in. I have to announce myself just like I would knock on the door if I were coming into a, to a conference room. So I know everybody's comfortable with that. It's just a matter of, of trying it and experiencing it. And, and the technology is such that you get that assurance that while you're in a breakout room, yes, you're in a breakout room. Nobody can put their ear up against the wall, the virtual wall, and listen to what's going on. The first question is a little more disturbing, to tell you the truth. If somebody's going to do that, well, I, I, you know what? I'm sorry. Then, then everything we work towards together falls apart. Th that's no different than somebody hitting a record button underneath the conference room table while we're working face to face. I, I, I'll just leave it at that. That's so far out of bounds. Listen, I get it. It could be a concern. Hasn't crossed my mind, obviously. Listen, we're all professionals. We, we're here to do a job. We're here to do the best we can on behalf of our parties and our clients. If somebody is going to do something that untoward uh, and that underhanded, well, listen, that would be the last time I'd certainly be working with them. I'll leave it at that. Okay. So the next question, I'm going to just pick this one up real quick here again. This sure. was a question asked earlier, which is how do we present documents? So again, just to reiterate, the easiest way to present the document in a Zoom meeting is as a participant of the meeting, the, me, the, the computer that you are working on should be the, that you are participating in the Zoom meeting in, should have your documents on there. You will have an option to share your desktop or share the document itself inside the meeting. All the participants inside of the meeting will be able to see your screen. So, and it doesn't have to be a complete screen, it can be just the document itself. Again, NAM IT is here to assist prior to the case, in case you just want to do a quick test prior to the case uh, to get those documents up and running on a screen share. Um, and that's it. I'm going to just uh, uh, answer it in that way. Hopefully that answered that question. Um, next one that's out there, Rich, is, is there a raise the hand option to bring a meteor back into a, into a breakout room? Yes. And, and th there is an option on your screen where you can say, I'd like you to step back into the breakout room, all right? The other, the way I've done it also is just have somebody, just so I'm not being annoying and I'm stepping back in every five minutes saying, oh, you ready for me? Are you ready for me? Are you ready for me? Um, I'll, I'll say to the folks, listen, either, either flag me through the Zoom program or if you want to just shoot me a quick email and say, we're ready for you to step back in. This way I don't make myself uh, annoying and I'm ready to come in as soon as you are. Okay, so the next question that's out there is how do you know what everyone is seeing and if you are on the screen? Great question. A lot of people ask that. So in the beginning, that's a lot of times why IT usually steps in in the beginning of a case. Uh, what we do is we put everybody on what's called a gallery view. We refer to it jokingly inside the hearings as, as the Brady Bunch mode. So basically, that's what it is. You'll see everybody all on one screen. Um, uh, the, the room gets filled. 
Inside of that, there's also a self view mode. So you would also be able to see yourself as part of the participant uh, um, screen listing. Let's see. Um, I think you sort of answered the next one uh, a little bit, but let's touch on it a little bit more. So the sure. next one is typically in-person mediations begin with a face-to-face -face between adversaries, followed by negotiating in separate rooms. Mm -hmm. How will the format of a virtual mediation differ? It, you know what? Honestly, it doesn't differ at all. Um, so we, we begin, you know, I, I receive my submissions electronically in advance. You guys send them into NAM submissions or you can send them directly to me. I've reviewed the submissions. I've put together my notes. We, we log on at our scheduled time. As Mike mentioned a couple of times, often there's an, an MIT person there in the room with us just to make sure we're up and running technologically. And then just as any other mediation, I'll say, okay, I did receive submissions from both sides. Thank you for those. Let me turn it over to plaintiff's counsel to begin. Everybody is in the room virtually with us. They can see each other. They can hear each other. They get the opportunity to exchange positions. I'll give plaintiff's counsel a brief opportunity at rebuttal. And then I'll bring the open session to a close. And I'll say, okay, everybody sit tight for about 15 seconds. I'm gonna send you into your breakout rooms. And then I'll either join plaintiff's counsel first or defense counsel first. Uh, and there really is no difference in, in, in the process. And, you know, like I've said a few times, the remarkable thing is once you do it, you kind of forget we're not sitting together because we are seeing each other. We are able to um, uh, look at each other's body language. It's, it is a big leap forward than just doing it by audio. Uh, I do encourage those uh, who have the capability to do both. There, there's, there's a big difference doing it by video. Listen, some are, are limited. Sometimes it has to be audio only. It's okay. It's workable, but it's not ideal because we want to try to get as close to the real experience as, as we can. And that's the video with the audio. Next question that is out there is, my concern is the ability of the remote client to have the technology to be part of the arbitration. I'll grab this one, Rich. Okay, so, go ahead, Mike. Technology to be part of the arbitration. Um, again, what's gonna happen is when the case is scheduled and you receive an email confirmation from us, you will actually have a link to join the meeting. From there, it'll take you to the zoom.us website to download the appropriate software onto your computer, your Macintosh, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever it may be. The technology is out there to uh, be cross-platformed. Um, best thing to do is when you are confirmed, um, you know, test it out, make sure it works for you. If there are any issues, being able to connect to the technology, phone number is 516-941-3211. That is the NAM IT Help Desk. We have many people on the line constantly fielding calls from not only NAM staff, NAM hearing officers, but all of our clients. So please, once you're confirmed, once you have your case on, on the docket, give us a call. We will help you get that technology up and running. Next question, Rich. I'm going to leave this one for you. So regarding plaintiffs joining from home or from their attorney's offices, what are you mm -hmm. seeing in your cases right now? Well, it, you know, I mentioned the uh, the professional musician a, a few minutes ago, and there he was down in his his, his home in Florida. Um, so it's really what what plaintiffs' counsel is comfortable with, uh, depending on the level of the sophistication of of the client. You may want them obviously right by your side if you're comfortable with social distancing and all these protocols we have to follow. Or if they're fairly sophisticated and you want to have them up on the screen, uh, like I said, I can put the two of you into a separate breakout room. Um, what I did the other day on that case with the professional musician, uh, plaintiff's counsel really didn't want the client to hear some of the opening demands and offers, I guess out of concern it might harden positions. So early on, I actually had three breakout rooms. So I had plaintiff's counsel by himself, and he was uh, working with me on, on his demands. Uh, we had the client off uh, by themselves down in Florida for a little bit, and then I had defense counsel in a third room. So we can mix and match it however 
you're most comfortable with your client. Great. Next two are going to be for me, Rich. So the first okay. one is, what is the protocol for what happens if someone loses a connection for a length of time? Again, I'm going to reiterate the number for everybody. 516-941-3211. At any time, give us a call. We will get you back in on the meeting. Uh, we will also notify the hearing officer that obviously the person's been lost and we're bringing them back into the meeting. So right. please use that number. That's the NAM IT Help Desk. We are here to help you keep the cases moving along as smoothly as possible. Next question, very common question. Are the mediations, I'll, I'll, I'll ad lib here, me, arbitrations being recorded by NAM? Nothing is being recorded by NAM. We are monitoring the, excuse me, we are monitoring the caseloads just by looking at the number of, uh, I'm actually looking at a dashboard right now, number of meetings that are going on right now. We associate that with the various hearings that are going on. Uh, we are fielding calls as they come in. We are you know, making associations. We, the only time that we come in on a case is uh, initially just to make sure everybody's working and then by request from the hearing officer. But nothing is being recorded by now. Next one's for you, Rich. As far as the arbitration submissions, do the arbitrators have virtual or hard copies available to review during the hearing? Well, that's really up to the arbitrator. So given our new uh, virtual world that we're living in, I'm receiving my submissions electronically, uh, depending on their length, depending on the nature of the exhibits. I, I may print some of them if I find that easier for my purposes, or I review them electronically on the screen and make notes as I proceed. And the next one is also going to be you. Uh, do you recommend clients be on a mediation? And if so, will they be put in a separate breakout room? All right. So we've touched upon this. And listen, this is always a, this is a question whether we're doing virtual ADR or more traditional ADR. Um, you know, you're going to have to judge that by your client, their level of sophistication. Listen, if you ask me as the mediator, I'm going to say, listen, I, I always want the clients there, right? I want to be able to get a sense of, of who they are, explain the process to them. I, be able to make them comfortable with what they're going to see roll out during the course of, of the day. Uh, but ultimately, you all have to be the judges. Is, is that going to make them uncomfortable? Obviously, that's not what we want to do. We want to make them comfortable with the process. We want to make them part of the process. And as I mentioned before, I can mix and match the breakout room so I can talk to counsel privately. I can talk to them with the client in the room. I can put them in the room with the client and then I can step out so you guys can have some private conversations. This works in any which way you are most comfortable. Great. Rich, actually this next question I'd like both of us to answer from two different perspectives. So this is okay. a question. Can you use the call-in function instead of Zoom? So from a technology standpoint, you most certainly can. You'll have a number to dial in on. It'll ask you to enter in your meeting ID, and it works perfectly fine. You become a participant on Rich's uh, or any hearing officer's console. Now, from a case standpoint, talk about calling uh, people versus video is, I guess, really the second half of answering that question. Right. So I, yeah, I touched upon this a little bit before. I, I'd like to try to encourage everybody to try the video component of it. Listen, it does work as audio only. Uh, what I see, uh, for example, I had a case this morning and I had defense counsel who I could see and I had his adjuster who I could not see, but I had a little square with his, his name on it. I can do everything I can do as if I could see the adjuster. I had them in a separate breakout room. I would be able to communicate with them privately. I was able to have them all together for the opening. So on some levels, it, it operates, as Mike said, exactly the same way. But I, but I do think just from the experience I'm gaining by doing this, I, I think something does get lost in translation when we're not able to see each other. Now, listen, you may not be in a position where you're able to have a video, and that's understandable. If you don't have it, you don't have it. And, and this is the only means by which you can participate. Listen, we'll make it work. 
But if you do have the option, again, I'd encourage everybody to take advantage of it because it is, it is a different field. Great. Another one for you, Rich. So are you arranging for the parties to engage in Zoom or does the plaintiff have to take the lead? Oh, NAM takes care of everything. Um, you know, I, I get my calendar the night before uh, with all the particulars. And, and much like you, I've given my, uh, my Zoom ID number. I log in a few minutes ahead of time. Uh, one thing I do, which you don't, I, I, I go through a small process. I just do a little housekeeping uh, where I become the host of the meeting. So I have one step beyond what you all have. But that's the device by which I get the control to create the breakout rooms and move everybody around. But, but I, you know, you get your confirmation from them. Just like we were going to meet in the city or we were going to meet in Garden City, the only difference is going to be this mediation will be held by video conference and it gives you the, the particulars by which you log into the Zoom meeting. Great. Another one for you, Rich. And again, I think you've touched on this one before, um, but again, I just want to reiterate, I don't want to miss anybody's questions here. Uh, at a mediation, representatives from one side are able to sit in the same room and chat. Does this change in a breakout room? Are we still able to sit with our council and other insurance reps and talk amongst ourselves virtually? And the short answer is yes, <laughs> absolutely, positively. Uh, so I had a, a fairly involved labor law case uh, that went into the evening last night. And those of you who practice in that area, you know what I'm dealing with, with contractual indemnity and additional insured status, and there were claims among and between. It was probably hard to coverage issues. I mean, there was the whole Megillah going on among and between. I, I had coverage counsel on the line. I had defense counsel on the line. I had carrier reps on the line, and I was mixing and matching them as need be, just like I would do if we were in the office. So again, the short answer is yes. So the next one I'm going to field over here. I was advised by a teacher that in her classroom, there was an outside VAP person who hacked in. The school district was alerted and took down the Zoom platform. How can that be if Zoom is a safe system? It's a great question. Again, very valid. Everybody's very concerned about uh, the, the, the recent uh, press releases that have taken place. So Zoom itself has, for its meeting settings, about 50 to 75 different security settings that can be set. We have been using Zoom at NAM for, I can't recall if it's a year and a half or two and a half years. It's been that long. We have modified our meeting settings with the tightest security measures that still make the system usable for our hearing officers put in place. Meetings are encrypted. Uh, the hearing officers all have the host feature capability. They can put participants on hold, on mute. They can shut down screen sharing. They have full control over the meeting. And again, and a phone call away is the NAM IT help desk that we can come in, intervene, and take care of those uh, issues that are taking place if they've taken place and, and mediate them, uh, I'm sorry, mitigate them as soon as possible. Short answer on this, so far to date, we have not had any intrusions on any of our meetings at NAM. Rich, the next one's gonna be for you actually. And I'm, I apologize if there's a little noise in the background after I read this. Oh, I think it's just gonna finish now. <laughs> Rich, this one's for you. Can someone later claim you had no authority to sign in for them? A sign for them. I'm talking about that that last document that you were well, talking about, mediation uh, agreement. Listen, I, I I suppose that's true. Um, you all know we operate in 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 a sphere of of trust, of integrity, of professionalism. Um, if someone is going to violate that, uh, listen that that we can't control. Um, I do, as I mentioned to you, I, I review the particulars of the NAM 
post-mediation agreement upon every settlement. I hold it up to the screen. I go through all the details. I literally ask everybody, do I have your permission to sign your name? Everyone says yes. I print your name and I put as per RPB, my initials, with telephonic authority. I put that in, in parentheses. And again, you get a hard copy of this, most likely the next day from, from NAM. Um, could anybody try to squelch a settlement after the fact? Perhaps. I, I hope not. Um, obviously, as I said, we're here as professionals. We're here trying to do right by our parties, our clients, our insurers. So we're all in this together. Um, and I think, you know, kind of bringing this full circle, we're, we're fortunate that we have this technology and, and, and we're able to continue to serve our, our clients and our parties in, in, this, in this tough time. But listen, it, it does take trust. It does take faith. We, we have to be able to work with each other. But honestly, that's, that's no different than if we were all sitting together around the conference room table. Listen, there, there, there's always uh, a need for good faith and fair dealing among and between us, no, no matter what side of the table. Okay. So I'm just taking a look at the questions right now, Rich. We're running about 20 minutes behind where questions have been asked. So we might have some repetitive questions as I roll through them. Uh, but this next one I'm going to take over, which is, can you give us an overview, overview on the technical aspects of what needs to be done pre-mediation for any setup, how far in advance, how the initial connection is created, and how the parties first interact together and then are moved into breakout rooms? So like I said, it's more of a technical aspect, so I'll, mm -hmm. I'll take care of that. So it, we're going to break it down to simplest terms. What needs to be done pre-mediation is install the software on your computer. Make sure that your audio and video works. That's about it. How far in advance? That's up to your comfort level. I've had people do it literally five minutes before the case takes place. I've had it take place a week and a half before. Um, the initial connection is created. Usually most people start joining a meeting between 10 and 15 minutes before the uh, hearing takes place. Most of it is uh, good mornings and niceties, mm -hmm. jokes. Um, Sometimes the hearing officer is running a little late and I'll be in there saying, uh, we need an extra 10 minutes. So it's really just a very informal setting when it first starts out. Uh, and then lastly, once we get into that uh, moving into breakout rooms, that's the hearing officer at that point. So you're already well into your established hearing. Uh, the hearing officer has taken over the host controls of the meeting. Usually IT has already left and uh, you're well on your way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question, Actually, I think the next couple might be for you. So next one is, is there a lower rate of settlements because you can't speak to litigants face to face? No, I, I, I have to tell you, I, uh, I am remarkably impressed with how many cases are settled. Um, I, you know, I haven't tracked any statistics, but boy, am I feeling pretty good right now. Everything is moving along. I think everybody is coming to the process seriously minded. Um, you, you know, interestingly enough, even though we have a lot of distractions out in the world around us, we don't have as many professional day-to-day -day distractions. So people are really coming to work. They know their files. I'm getting my written submissions. Everybody's ready to get down and, and, and get to business. And I've been, frankly, very, very pleased with how many cases are set. Okay. So the next one's for you too, Rich. Uh, more of a legal question, which is kind of neat. My understanding is that recording is not ethical and would not be admissible in any future court proceedings. Well, I, I agree. Listen, the, the, the mainstay of mediation, as we know, is, is confidentiality. Listen, none of this is ever to be breathed about outside our virtual four walls. And again, that brings me back to that comment earlier. If someone is going to do something like that, unprofessional, underhanded, for what gain, I don't know, 
listen, that'd be the last time I'd be working with them. If, if, if we don't have faith and trust in each other, then this whole process evaporates. Okay. And Rich, I think you've answered this one before, but again, we're going to just put it out there. Is sure. the mediator able to speak with an attorney without his or her client present in a breakout room? Yes. Again, short answer, yes. As I mentioned a, a little bit earlier, I can mix and match the breakout rooms. Um, you know, just like I would if we were in the office. You know, I'll say to uh, plaintiff's counsel or defense counsel, do you want me to speak, speaking about numbers in front of the client? Do you want to meet privately about that? And of course, I honor and follow your respective leads on that and then do what I need to do just with the technology to make sure we're able to have that private uh, discussion, just like we were together. Great. Next question. What security is in place on the connection to join to the mediation? Many carriers have IT requirements about what you can and can't access. So I'll obviously feel this one. First mm -hmm. off, uh, I'm going to just take the, 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 the tail end of a, uh, a, a uh, Zoom highlight security compliance uh, uh, issuance that we have. For those clients with IT departments, please note Zoom is SOC 2 compliant, certified by trustee for privacy, and is an active participant of the EU US Privacy Shield framework. Now, if for some reason you cannot download the Zoom software, Zoom also has a web client. In those cases, no software download is required. However, there sometimes is some hardware uh, limitations, such as we found uh, cameras don't sometimes work or sometimes the audio component does not work. Uh, but again, uh, we've tried to address uh, by providing a product that has cross-platform capability and does also meet all the security requirements that we would need, that we as a, as a company require as well. And let's see. Um, Rich, this one's for you. I assume you will also be able to break out counsel from their client to have the, oh, okay, I, you just answered this one before. This is, mm -hmm. I assume you will be able to uh, break out counsel from their client to have the in the hall conversations that are very exactly important. exactly okay. and you know what and that's a good description of it the in the hall conversation yes it's in a separate breakout room but it's the equivalent to us taking a stroll down the hallway okay and then is there ever a situation where a party lacks a suitable device to video conference and do does nam send them a proper device in those situations um and again technologically i'll speak on that behalf no, we don't send out any uh, equipment to anybody for uh, for uh, for the hearings. Uh, again, the it, it is a product that is cross-platform capable. Um, it is also available as telephone only, uh, so long as all parties are in agreement with that. And again, there's also a web client that, in the event you cannot down, download software, you should be able to uh, access uh, Zoom in some flavor uh, or, or way, shape, and form. Um, okay, and here's another question. What if the client doesn't have a camera? Again, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, reiterate that. Again, most hearings right now, we're being very flexible with that. I think most parties are being flexible, Rich. Can you vouch for that? Yes, no, listen, if, if, if the uh, participant doesn't have video capability, then we're able to communicate with them through audio and again, from my standpoint in creating the breakout rooms, it's no different to me. I, I assign them to a breakout room for their audio capability. Um, so they are able to be mixed and matched along with those who are participating by video. And let me just make mention of that. It, it, it can be a mixed band. It doesn't mean everybody has to be by video or everybody has to be by audio. I certainly have had a number of mediations already where some are on the phone, some are on video, and we're able to work accordingly. Okay. Next one's for me. It's please repeat the IT department number. one <laughs> one <laughs> All right. <laughs> and um, are there any changes in the price points of NAM services? Rich, do you want to answer that? You want me to answer? Well, you know what? My, my, my un I'm, I'm going to say my, my understanding is no. I don't know that for a fact. I assume not. Uh, NAM, I think, as you all know from working with the company for many years, is, is very 
competitive uh, when it comes to pricing its services. So I can't imagine there's been any change in that. I don't know it for a fact. I'll be candid with you, uh, but I can't imagine that there is. So I will, even though I am not part of the billing side of things, I will say um, NAM has never charged for video conferencing or there teleconferencing, never in the past, and especially not now. There we go. There's the answer. So there you go. Um, Due to security measures, my firm does not allow for downloading additional software. Is the software that Zoom requires JavaScript based or and temporary or something else? Well, like I said, there's also a web-based version. Uh, we've also worked with several uh, IT departments in getting Zoom approved as a platform uh, for use. Uh, but to answer your questions, again, uh, if you can't download, uh, best bet is to try the web-based version and see if that's compatible with your hardware. Um, will NAM be sending a link directly to the client on an arbitration if we decide to have the client testify from their home? Rich, I believe uh, that we're doing that from the scheduling side, right? Yes, yes. My understanding is, it, listen, it will come to counsel. You'll have to share it with, with the client. But yes, you'll have all the particulars uh, needed for the client. Uh, NAM won't be communicating with the client directly, obviously, but you'll have all the information you need to share with your client so they're able to participate. Great. And next question I'll field real quick. Do we need to alert our IT department that we are going to participate? Again, that's based on, um, uh, that is, I'm sorry, I just had a text come through over here. <laughs> sorry. Um, that is based on your company policies, not ours. We don't require that you contact your, your IT department um, to participate. Uh, that would be something that's uh, policy based on your end. And uh, Rich, uh, I just had a clarification over here on the answer that we gave uh, yes. regarding scheduling. Um, yes. So I was just informed that the attorneys have to share the Zoom meeting with their client. We're not sending it directly from our scheduling system. Oh, no, no, no. And that's what I had understood. And if I, if I, if I misstated it, I apologize. That, NAM is not going to communicate directly with the client. NAM will give counsel the information needed so that you in turn can share it with the client so the client's able to participate. Okay. Uh, next one I'm going to answer. Are all mediators at NAM utilizing these virtual mediations or only certain people? So to answer your question, long story short, uh, as hearings are coming up, if a hearing officer has not been trained in Zoom technology, we are training them. So um, it is an ongoing process and all hearing officers are being trained as their, as their caseload is upcoming. Okay, so next one, let's see. Would you have the ability to simultaneously email the final agreement and ask for immediate acceptance by all to satisfy concerns as to documenting authority? Um, so that's more on that post-mediation agreement. Yeah, so, so that's, that's one of the logistical issues we're, we're trying to, to avoid, quite frankly, because for me to then start circulating the post-mediation agreement and following up for it, and getting it back around and everybody being able to sign and scan and sign and scan. So the decision was made, it's just more uh, efficient on a practical level for me to get your telephonic authority. Again, you'll get the hard copy, if not that day, then certainly the following day for, for your records, but we don't wanna lose track of these. Uh, and listen, we all know logistics can be, uh, uh, daunting sometimes and if we've got a multi-party case and then all of a sudden we're trying to chase down the post-mediation agreement we don't want arrangements to have fallen apart because of the logistics so right now the process is as I went through a little bit earlier I hold up the agreement I review it I ask in front of everybody do I have your telephonic authority to sign it I sign it I pdf it to NAM and they get it to you electronically if not that day then the next morning okay we're down to three more questions, uh, and this one's just a few minutes ago, so if somebody just needs to just be refreshed on this. When I'm in a breakout room with my adjuster, can I see him or her or just you and only, um, and only hear them? If, if, if they are participating by video, you can see one another. Okay. And you, when I'm not in the room, obviously, you don't see me. Great. And 
This one's for me. So if we are able to join this Zoom presentation, joining a Zoom mediation should be seamless. I never say seamless, <laughs> but if you, you obviously have been able to download the Zoom software. Um, the only thing that we have not really tested in a webinar for you as an individual is your audio and video, but you are, <laughs> you are about 75% there. <laughs> so uh, I think you would have a high level of success at this point. And the last one. So in a mediation, would you have all parties and attorneys join the session and then have the PD adjusters go out to a breakout room and then have them join in as needed? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, no, no, no. And again, <laughs> this kind of goes back to the heart of what we're doing here. This, this process is no different than any of our other mediations. Listen, I, I follow council's lead. How best do you want to design this? Do you want these folks to go speak on their own for a little bit and then come back? And again, I'm able to put together those who need to speak privately, those who need to speak with me. We can mix and match. We can take people in and out of the rooms. It really is remarkable once you see how it works, which kind of brings me back to where we started uh, when, when we opened the seminar about an hour ago, and that is try it. I, I really do think that if you try it, you will find it to be a very, very easy and productive process. And, and I think you'll be glad you've done it. You'll certainly serve your, your clients well by being able to keep their matters moving through some very uh, challenging times. But Again, fortunately, we do have this technology that's letting us do this despite the challenges out there in the real world. All right, and that's all our questions, Rich. All right, well, listen, first of all, I wanna thank everybody for participating. Uh, I, I hope this was, was, was helpful. I wanna thank Mike again uh, for his role in all of this, because listen, we couldn't do this without the NAM IT department. So we're very, very appreciative of all their hard work and the ease by which uh, they they have allowed us to continue with our with our hearings. And and listen, most importantly, my best wishes to everybody and your families. We'll we'll, we'll get through this. We'll see each other live one of these days soon. But of course, just. Just be safe and take care of each other. And thank you.